Howdy, beautiful Bart here, and welcome. Hopefully you guys can hear me okay here. Alright, so I had a couple questions that keep coming up over the last couple days, and I want to touch off on them a little bit. Um, the first one I just want to cover that I am looking into is um, there was a, some concerns with lighting. And I'm actually going to go into, um, and this was with the Polygon Nature pack. So I've got um, just the demonstration map up. I have added in, um, let's do a quick lighting build here. Because I did do that earlier. But um, all I've done is I've modified the skybox a little bit and set it up to where I've got a day and night cycle just so I can look at the materials during the um, daytime and nighttime. Howdy, howdy, howdy. So, as soon as this finishes, it shouldn't take very long. Tonight's drink of choice, Watermelon Crush. Do what, they need to sponsor my ass. So much Crush products that I, I consume Probably way too many, but uh, as much as I consume, they should be sponsoring this household. Between myself and mother, we go through quite a bit. So, I just want to look at this really quickly here, and I haven't come up with a solution to this problem yet, but I will eventually. Just, you know, haven't had a chance to actually work on it. Oh, would you come on? Hurry up, lighting build. I mean, seriously, we go through. Um, Orange Crush, probably about, um, I don't know, four, uh, six packs a week, or more, and that's of the, uh, these are what, 20 ounce, or 16.9 ounce. The Watermelon is in two liters. I haven't been able to find it in the uh, the, the bottles, smaller bottles yet. But um, the watermelon during the summertime, love to put this in a, um, the little molds for making your own popsicles. Holy shit, this is going to take a while. Um, so yeah, you make popsicles out of the, uh, the watermelon crush and it's freaking awesome. Alright, so this lighting build is going to actually take a while. So while it's doing its thing here, um, animations for death. Now, if you've already got death animations, this may not do anything for you. Um, this particular setup and this project, I've already got um, a bunch of animations already converted and stuff like that for the Cindy Studios characters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab death 3 here, and I'm going to right-click, retarget, and this is from the animation starter pack. And I'm just going to retarget it to my Polygon character. Change the folder I want it to go to. And click OK and retarget. So that's giving me a death animation. So, pretty cool. Good enough. And I'm actually going to go ahead and rename it just to death. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to go into it, and I want to death pose. So I'm going to pause it, scroll all the way to the very end, so I'm at the last frame. So my character is just laying there at the final part of that animation of being dead, death. And I want to create an asset. Create animation from current pose. And then we go to that same folder other and I'm just going to call this dead. So make sure you're going to close it and then go back into it again. So you can see this, it's zero frames and it's just a steady pose from that ending point here. Import built static lighting. Thank you. Are you just about done hogging up my computer? So, as soon as it finishes un hijacking my Shiite here for doing the um, lighting build. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yes, there's some um, issues whenever you do a lighting build with that map. Is instance foliage actor. The light map size for this instant static mesh is large, so it's too big. But whatever. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. We'll go go back to the animation part. So now that I'm in the map, walking around, you can see the shadows are changing. Um, I actually have some that I downloaded. Um, there's plenty of uh, websites for free audio, free wave files, sound effects, things like that, and royalty-free stuff. But you can see, well, we missed the the full night time. Now I've got it set to go really, really quickly here for the daylight. So you can see the shadows are going pretty quick. Um, using, um, let's see, you can see the sun's actually moving too. So the sun goes down and it becomes nighttime. And as you can see, the lighting is going from underneath now. And yeah, even at its darkest point, there's still a lot of illumination on all of the stuff here. It's because, you, as you can see, the bottom of the light, uh, the plant there, the light was on the bottom of it. And that's just because the sun and lighting is... No, I just threw this in here. This is from one of my other videos that I did uh, um, doing transitional light on. But now, with the Cindy Studios asset, it's a little bit easier. Um, using a different skybox... So, you see nighttime, but the problem is the lighting is now coming from underneath the map and it's still shining through. Um, probably going to have to change the settings for, um, as you can see, this is actual landscape. So there's an issue with the landscape itself. Um, I don't know if it's in the landscape material or what, but... Might have to mess with some of the light mass settings. I will mess with this later because um, I really haven't figured that out yet. And this is a problem I just was lured into here. So, a little sun shaft there, a light shaft. So, yeah, the, the only thing that I did in here was um, I got a reference to my light source. And all you do is you click on light source go into level blueprint right click and left click right here create a reference to light source and all you're doing is um, creating a variable called speed and that's gonna be how fast the sun moves and, and your, your lighting moves if I change this to one it'll be slower if I change it to 30 it'll be really quick um, so the lower that number is for the speed the slower the rotation of the, the sun and, and lighting and then you're just grabbing from the event tick from your delta seconds. You're multiplying delta seconds and speed. And you're going to make a rotator. Set it into your pitch. Run that into an add actor local rotation from your light source. And that's it. And the... Um, you can always go back through this video and freeze frame it right there. And just copy that. But... The, um, the light source itself, um, you need to make sure that your light source is movable. And get scale, that's nice. Um, intensity, you probably lower your intensity, might help a little bit. So let's put it at 5 and see how it looks. It's a little bit darker overall. You see the the shadows are moving and then it turns nighttime. The only thing I did with this scene to change the um, overall, besides cleaning up all that stuff, um, the sky sphere, and this one's a generic sky dome, I just changed it over to um, mountain sky box. And just went to the static mesh and just opened that up, typed in sky, and changed that over. And that allowed me to, to now be able to see 
like the sun. And another thing that I did was I went to the light source and I used rotation to make sure that this was straight down. It doesn't have to be straight down. You could actually change the angle a little bit and you know the sun will go over at an angle but keeping it like that going straight down it means that whenever the sun goes over it's going to go directly over the top and it'll be at the 12 o'clock position directly above your head and go that way so all right let's get back to this guy here um make sure we do a quick save all And screwing around with this this uh, particular thing here, our character, as you can see, we got from the uh, the Western pack. It's set up to where you hit the number one key that draws a weapon out, or in this case, a rifle, and goes to the hip fire animation blueprint. And now you can do your thing. You can jump, run around. You can crouch do all your stuff but if you um, hit it again it takes you out of that and goes back into your unarmed animation so what I want to do now is just create a death animation so I can do Q or E whatever just to have a key to, to bind to it so we've already got our character blueprint here and then we got our animations here death or dying uh, death is the actual animation now this is just the cheese method for getting this to work the best thing to do is actually to make a um, animation montage and then set up a, an actual function but this will work just for short term so you can get it back into complicating things even more so we just want to do keyboard um, Q. So I'll just type in the word keyboard, select Q. So now when we press the Q key, we're going to die. So what this is going to be is um, normally a function would work good, but functions don't like to use uh, delays. And I like to use a delay in this. So the first thing we want to do here is let's just learn how to, to put your hands on the keyboard correctly. We're going to play sound at location and what I'm going to do is just use a temporary sound for a death animation. So what I actually want to use is um, instead of getting prepared for this I didn't want to actually take the time to search through so I'm just going to use for right now the collapse very cheesy. I'm going to use that Q, but I'm also going to go into um, my assets, audio, effects, um, let's actually create another one, new folder, let's call this attenuations. So I'm going to right click, go to sounds, sound attenuation, player, AT. <coughs> Sorry. And we're going to leave it set the way it is right now. It's just going to be a linear sphere, uh, 400, 3600. We could actually change that to 300 and 1200. Yeah, it doesn't really matter so much. We just wanted a short attenuation radius. So if you're eating, you want to use this, or death animations, things like that. So it only affects the area around you. So from that we can now go here select collapse Q and instead of trying to worry about setting it here let's actually go back to our collapse Q or wherever whatever you're using for your your thing here and override attenuation I want to make it use player attenuation so now it's going to play it and it's going to use that attenuation setting so that it's only going to play in a short radius 
and to make sure that we get it in the right radius we'll get a reference to our mesh and let's get world location and we'll probably end up using this a couple times but we want to get our world location and let's do that so now it's going to get the location of where we are and it's going to play that wave file so now if we go in and play we get the sound file so then we want to go ahead and do an animation and we can do play animation for our mesh and we don't need this one we can actually just grab it off from here use that same reference to our mesh so if you want to keep it clean and only have one so new animation to play is going to be our death and it's not looping so we don't need to worry about that and the next thing we want to do is let's find our animation other death when you mouse over it you look down say path cooking file path retarget sequence length is 1.90000 so we know that we need to put in a delay here and that delay needs to be that sequence length which is 1.9 and then we want to do the same thing again play an animation so we'll drag that up here link that in here and set it to looping and dead but we're going to want to do one more thing. We don't keep, we don't want the player to be able to move. So we need to disable the the movement. So you get um, character movement and deactivate. I don't think it's going to work. I, I can't remember. Um, so the first thing we need to do is make sure that we are setting this in here so once we start the death sequence here it's deactivating any movement for the player whatsoever you don't want the character to be able to keep moving while they're dead and sliding all over the world so you just gotta stop them and then what we can do here is just run this as a test real quick see if it's all working so if we're running around everything is good all of a sudden boom there we go we are dead we can't do anything so oh, let's respawn okay so let's set up to use the e key to respawn you could also do the uh, same deal here is after the character dies they respawn and you can set up a respawn location um, this goes along with the the teleport videos that I did so you can actually set up a yeah and it's super simple to, to do something like this we know that our player start location is going to be at negative 750 and let's set it to 120 so when we we hit play this is where we we spawn this is our spawn location so if we die, let's have it um, respawn us at that location, the player start. So come back over here and we can set a delay of five seconds. So after we die, we want to wait five seconds, ten seconds, three days, whatever. And then let's go ahead and uh, let's see. Set actor location. And we want it to be self. New location. 
now here's where it, if you just wanted to go to a, a fixed location that's cool but let's go ahead and create a variable and we're going to call this um, spawn point we're going to change that to a vector we're going to compile save now I'm going to go ahead and give this a set location and that particular case we're going to use the player start which is negative 750 0 120 negative 750 0 and 120 now one thing I did do also in another example was I created a, um, a little pad right here so you can see this is your spawn point but you could also set up um, control points when the player passes by a certain uh, point right here and I'll just for our giggles right now I'll go ahead and I'll throw one in there assets gadgets um, let's create a new blueprint called an actor called checkpoint and this checkpoint for visibility reasons I'm gonna add a box or cube here and I'm gonna do this just you know visible spear right here or, or platform for us to see you wouldn't really necessarily want that or you may want that whatever you want and then we want a box collision and we're gonna make that two by two you asshole two by two it's actually I think it'll be 2.5 or, or 3 by 3 by and that's fine we just want to step on this and it um, create our spawn point or our our checkpoint so delete all that stuff click on our box collision right click on it on component begin overlap other actor and what we want to do here is cast your character mine's player underscore base but you know that's what I always use um, so it's going to cast to that and set spawn point so when we step on this it's going to set our spawn point to well where do we need to get it from we can get a reference to our cube and get world location so now wherever we place this it doesn't matter um, we could put 10 of them in our map we could put a thousand of them in our map it doesn't matter anytime we step on this cube it's gonna change our spawn point to that so now I'm gonna go in here we know that our normal spawn point is here but I'm gonna go ahead and put this one here and we'll put one over here again these are just for visual reference so we're, we're pretending that these are different areas in our map that we want to set as a respawn point and so we have a visual representation let's um put a sphere in front of this one a cube in front of this one and a cone in front of this one all right so now when we hit play we run around Ugh, we're dead wait five seconds and then it should throw us back to our spawn point well we need to reactivate everything else here but it got us to that point so let's go ahead and finish out our respawn system our new location so let's um set spawn point to a default negative 750 0 and 120 so now if we hit compile and save our default spawn point is going to be where we we initially spawned and since it is our default now it's going to default to that location okay so the next thing we want to do is 
And I'm going to go ahead and get new references here because this is a long ways off. I'm going to get a reference to our mesh and to our character movement. And at this point, I want to I want to set animation instance class. And this is actually setting us back to our actually no, it's unarmed and a BP. So now we're going back to our normal animation system and we're going to activate our character movement. Because over here we deactivated it, so over here we want to reactivate it. So now we run around, everything is cool. Oh no, ooh, we just died. We're dead. There we go. We respawned, but now if we come over here and we've just set this as our spawn point. So I'm going to run around the map, I'm doing things, and we went to the, the square. Oh no, I just died. So we went our five second respawn time, and that'll put us right back underneath the world. Yay! Um, now, the reason why it did that is because it set that. Our height there is actually below the ground. You see it's sticking to the ground a little bit. So let's go to our checkpoint. And we could do a couple things here. And one of them, if we look, it's sticking to the ground a little bit. So let's actually set our cube to... Well, let's actually bring it up by 5. So we set this back here and move it down, or we could have just put that value in of 5. But the problem still is going to be that, um, get your donkey ass right over there. When we come over here and select one, now you see they're on top of the ground now. So we're going to use this, and oh, we just died. We still spawn to the ground. It's because the, sp the height of this is set to zero. Zero, 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 essentially. Zero height. Well, we need something that's going to be the same height as our height listed on our, our spawn here of 120. So if we go into our checkpoint and we add in a component, a scene component. Now, if we go into here, we can set this to 120, go to our event graph, and instead of getting a reference to our cube, we get a reference to our scene component, and that's going to be at 120 above the ground, so if we compile and save. Now, as we're running around, do our regular death, it defaults back to our original spawn point where we first came into the map because we haven't triggered anything yet. But let's go over here and, okay, this is our new spawn point. I'm running around. Oh, crap, I just died again. So we've got our five seconds, and there we go. Perfect. Because it did set the, um, the scene component height. So let's, let's change our spawn point. Okay, we just made another checkpoint here. Okay, now I'm running around the map, and oh, crap, I just died again. Oh, we got to respawn. Do I have to respawn all the way back to the start or the first checkpoint? Mm, no, because I've already cleared the second checkpoint. So, And every time you, you go through a different checkpoint, and then if you get killed, it re you're setting the checkpoint resets your spawn point. So now every time I, I respawn, it's going to respawn me right back on that one with the square or the cube. Yeah, it's super simple. And... You know, that one system right there alone, let's see, I just made another checkpoint here, so, oh, dead. I figured I'd throw that in here, just because it's, it's super simple, it only takes a few seconds to do it, and games like doing a side-scroller, or any game where you want to, you're, you're setting your, your player progression, and 
it's like you're working your ass off to get to a certain point. So you say, okay, I'm, I'm hauling ass through here, I'm hauling ass through here, and I haven't made it to the first checkpoint yet, and I die. Well, you're kind of screwed, so you're going to start back at your first spawn point. Yeah, I did this for um, my pitfall uh, demo that I did. So now you, you, you're you running along, you finally make it to your first checkpoint. Alright, awesome, and then, oh uh, crap, I died. And now when I respawn, I don't have to go back to the very beginning again. I go back to my last known checkpoint. Another thing, kill Z height, world settings. Set it to negative 1000. So in theory, you want to kill your player. Um, what happens though is whenever you fall out of the world, you're just dead. Um, that's something totally different. So, um, the best thing to do to, to keep this as simple as possible is use terrain, use objects, use whatever to actually prevent your players from falling out of the world. Um, I mean, if you wanted to set up a basic geometry system or walls or what have you. Let's see, let's set up the... 500, I'm going to be at 250 on height. Um, that's a little bit different method of death. Um, it's not that hard to set up, but it's just, I found that it's easier to um, set it up to where if you prevent your players from getting out of the map to begin with, it's going to be a better thing in the long run. So, um, let's see, we wanted our X to be 2,000. So setting up boundaries is super easy. You can just make it to where your map has physical boundaries. But if you can't really set up a physical boundary and you want to still keep your players from falling out of the world, just go to um, Volumes got a blocking volume and you just want to set that and you can use whatever transforms you want on it so you can grab this transform here and I'm gonna make sure that I put it in, in zero so it's centered up and scale it up and that's all there is to it is just creating a blocking volume and you can control C control V you know so you can copy and paste as many as you want. So now whenever you play, your character can't fall out of the world because you're blocking them from getting out. So that's going to help save you the the hassle from from dealing with that. Yay, I can jump out of the map. No, no, I can't jump out of the map. Oh well. Oh, no, I died. You'd also do um, um, other things too, like set up a box collision to inflict health damage and with health equals zero then you're dead but I didn't set up a health system on this one this is just setting up a, a button to kill us um, if you wanted to set up to where instead of pressing a key to make all this happen since there's delays it doesn't like going into a function but it's smooth this way and it works um, if you wanted to set it up a little bit differently you could do, all, always do um, right click and do custom event and call that death so what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this link here so now whenever I call this custom event of death hit sounds um, that's done whenever you're you're doing your your actual hit and whenever you're you're setting up your your line trays for uh, ranged weapons or if you're doing a melee attack and your, your weapon hits at the same time you're calculating that hit to do damage then you just add that sound in that's all it is to it so now we have a custom event called death 
and I'm just going to go and I'm going to highlight all of it. And I am going to... Actually, I can do this. I can highlight all of it except for the name custom or the thing custom event. So with all of it highlighted, I can come in here and right click on it, collapse node, and call it whatever you want. And that way you're not taking up a huge amount of space in your, your blueprint. You can just do that. That takes up a hell of a lot less space. Now, since we're using Q as our kill method, then all I have to do is just come in here and and call that custom event. So whenever I press Q, I am causing death. Um, same thing as if you had health and as, as a variable. Um, I always set up my health to be a float. And compile. Set a hurt value of 100. Compile and save. Um, if, if now you can set up your situation to where when you you your health equals zero, then you perform death um, or whatever. Um, so now come over here. See, I, I'm trying my best to move around. I can't now. You can spam the shit out of it. Um, so to, to fix that, go into that, and you got all this stuff in here that you can work with. You can just um, create a variable is dying. Probably not spelling that correctly, but I don't care. We're gonna make that a boolean. We want to do a branch node. And we want to get is dying and set that to false. So if we are dying, then we can't do anything. If we're not dying when this happens, then we can do all this. But then what we need to do is add in. Um, Uh, do, 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 do. Um, we need to set is dying. Asshole, little meo. Set is dying. To true at that point. Because it's already asked, are we actually dying? If the answer is yes, then we don't want to do anything. So now it's setting it to is dying to true. And then at the very end, let's go ahead and, and move you over here. And let's drag you. Set is dying to false. And for the hell of it, let's drag you to here. So let's get compile and save. That should prevent us from spamming the death button. So I'm hitting the hell out of that queue, and I cannot move, I cannot re-die again. So you can't die when you're dead. Does that make sense? So, yeah, when you're, you're doing melee attacks, like say if you're swinging a sword and you hit somebody with a sword, um, you can actually sit there and... When you're applying damage, whenever your collision box collides with the target or whatever, and you're saying, okay, remove X number of damage, then just add in the same thing, um, a sound file. Play sound at location, get a reference location to the player's location, or, or whatever, and then you're doing it the same way. So, play sound at location, get world location, get a reference to the mesh, and there you go, play your sound. Now, keep in mind, this is all the very simple method of, of getting this to work. It works. 
So with the fact that it, it just works, you could complicate things and add more stuff and whatnot, but now that we've created our death as a... Um, we've got our random checkpoints we can set anywhere in our map, so that's cool. But also we have the fact that no matter where they are... Now, like I said, it doesn't matter where they are. If I move these guys now, it doesn't matter. Wherever I put this checkpoint in... Um, and if you want to leave that that right there as a visual reference, and then you decide, okay, I don't want to see that box anymore. If you go to your your cube, and you could always just scroll down and uncheck visible or un, or check hidden in game. When you do that, it's going to hide it inside the game, and you won't actually see it. So if I, I select hidden in game hit compile and save I can see it in the editor but then whenever I hit play it disappears so you can see what you got there I know that this box right here is my checkpoint it's got a visual reference to it BAM I could throw it in the map but whenever I hit play and the players are actually playing the game it's not visible it's still there so you see I just walked on it and then whenever I die Then five seconds later, bang, I respawn right there. I mean, you could always add uh, an effect to it, like just for giggles, add a component of a point light. Okay, so we'll take this light, we'll throw it up in the air a little bit so we can see that right, up, right there, this is a this is it. This is my spawn point. And I'm going to change it to red. So if I hit play, there's a red glow above where my checkpoint is. And you could also set it up to where it's glowing a little bit lower. You can do whatever. So now you've got a visible checkpoint, but what happens is when you go into that checkpoint, um, you can actually make that light go away if you want. So let's actually drag a reference to our point light, and uh, let's set visibility. To fault. Then what the heck? Let's add a delay in. And delay of five seconds. And yeah, so what'll happen is um you can either make the light go out whenever you or go on you could do it either way so whatever you're you're triggering this I'll do it this way and then I'll come back and I'll switch it so now we can see we've got a light I come over here and I trigger it it turns the light off so now I run around I know that I've triggered it and then uh, do 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 oh there it's back or I could set it up to where it's the opposite so then we go in here the visibility is set to true so what you want to do is go to your point light and uncheck visible so it's not visible and then it comes on let me know that I just cleared my checkpoint five seconds later the light will go off so then I, I know that I've completed my checkpoint So, another little simple thing. You could have played a sound saying checkpoint, you know, or whatever, you know. Put a little flash on the screen, little thing says checkpoint reached, you know. I mean, hell, that's uh, another thing you could do. Say, um, let's look at our audio. Um, let's see. Well, 
let you know you could make it play um, see it sets our spawn point and then play sound at location throw that in there so that it plays a sound and lets us know that um, we've just done this. We have done something. And we'll do explosion cue and just so that we have it right, explosion cue override our attenuation to our player attenuation. So if somebody else is nearby, they're not going to hear it unless they're within that short proximity. So that's that. Our checkpoint now plays that sound. It does our point light, turns it on, lets us know that, hey, you just made a checkpoint. Compile and save. If you wanted to play, um, let's go to our gadgets. If you wanted to play, you know, show something on your screen here, um, have a widget, widget blueprint. Checkpoint underscore widget. Go in here. It's going to grab text. And let's make sure we anchor it to our center. Change that to checkpoint. And then let's go ahead and Whatever, let's make it 80. Close enough. I mean, you can sit there and, and actually go through the thing of knowing your distance and measure it and get it just right. Um, compile, save. Um, on the graph. Uh... What we need to do is we need a variable to say, hey, we just had a checkpoint. Um, so go to our character blueprint and checkpoint reached. So that's good enough. We'll leave it as a boolean. Compile, save, and checkpoint widget. Um, trying to think of the best way to actually do this so that um, we can bring it up show it in our, our viewport so let's go back to our player go to our event graph what are you get rid of that damn cursor okay um Let's actually create another custom event. Checkpoint. Um, let's uh, branch. Checkpoint reached. If it is true then create widget and checkpoint widget get player controller we need to add to viewport And let's add it just for giggles here. Delay of two seconds, and then let's 
set checkpoint reached to false. So we end up having to run that off our event tick. Do we have an event tick anywhere? Let's find out. E event tick. Apparently not, because if you start putting one in and you don't have one, it'll create the node. If you do have one, it'll teleport your view to that location. So let's um, just run checkpoint. This would not be the preferred method of doing it. I'm just trying to get it to be as an example here. So if checkpoint is yes, then we'll do this. And then checkpoint widget. We want to cast to our player. Get player controller. Dyslexia is going to, I'm going to put the wrong one here. So, yeah, it's get player character. Uh, let's see. You get player character, and then you're going to get checkpoint reached. If checkpoint reach is equal to false, then remove from parent. So again, probably not the best way to do this, but I just wanted to... I'm probably missing something here. So, okay. Um, checkpoint. We then want to go ahead and notify the player that... Um, Set checkpoint reached to true today would be nice. Today, hello, eat ass. Now, I'll do what I tell you to do. So, you're setting your spawn point and you're setting checkpoint reached. So, now in theory. Come over here and checkpoint, and it goes away, and then the light goes off. There you go. <laughs> it works. It's cheesy, but it works. But does it reset? Yep, it does. What if I do this one over here? Yay. What about this one? Yay. It works. And there was much rejoicing. Well, I hope this has given some people some ideas on, on doing some things that'll help with their their game. I mean, you could change the timing around. So, instead of it being five here, we'll set that two. I believe it was two. So now the light and checkpoint. They should both go away at the same time. Now you could do other things like add in effects and, you know, whatever, and then make them dissolve or whatever. But, yeah, that's, this kind of stuff right here would be great if you're playing an endless runner, or not really an endless runner, but a... a side scroller or something like that something where you're you're trying to move along and you want to save your progression you know, oh crap I just died 
So it'll go back to my last checkpoint that I cleared. Checkpoint. Okay. So, But now if I go here, this is the new checkpoint. Oh, shit, I died. Now to go to the correct checkpoint. Respawn animation? What do you need animation for? You respawn and pff, there you go. What you're trying to say is um, instead of it, okay, now I died, I did my, my death animation. Now it teleports me back to my spawn point and I'm ready, ready to go. Or are you talking about, okay, I've just died. And now I want it to stand back up. Well, but is that what you're trying to say, though? Is to, okay, I died, now I want my character to stand back up? You could make them, whenever you die, you do your animation. Five seconds later, whenever your your death animate your death timer is up. Well, you know, you can do whatever you want right there. I mean, whenever you you're setting your your respawn. Let's go to our death function. Okay, so that's just a matter of adding another animation. Before you set your animation instance, um, tell it to do an animation. Um, so let's actually look at that's that's beyond simple, dude. I mean, it's like super, super simple. You're just adding one more animation into it. Um, let's use the animation of oh shit. I've already got animation that I can... I, I got... Unarmed. Jump loop. Um, so, let's make him do... This is his respawn animation. Or, or whatever. You set up an animation... This is where you'd want an animation montage. You would set up a respawn montage. And then you would just tell it to play the animation montage. Um... Let's see here. Um, just wanted to do one time and not loop, but jump start, jump loop, and then jump. So essentially, all you're wanting to do then is just when you set your actual location be before you set this stuff here set your animation instance class and reactivate your your players being able to move so just we after you set your your actual location just um play an animation montage or in this case I'm just gonna play an animation and I don't need your damn mesh reference screw you I got my own mesh reference And well, I don't remember where that jump is, so I'm going to go over here. Say unarmed jump. It takes 0.2 seconds, and it's going to play that. And then you want a little delay. Point two is not going to be something that's really visual visual here, but so all you're doing is just telling it to play that animation. And I can change whatever animation I want at that point. So I'm running around and boom, just died. I'm going to do our five second delay. And when I respawn, it did the animation. Let's, let's put a longer animation in here. Point seven. Um, 
really have any good animations I could use here. Um, prone to stand. I mean, whatever, you know. You could see it was a little, little blank there. Um, pretty much just tell them to do anything. Whatever your animation you want to put at that point. I mean, this one, for example, is um, a little bit longer. Animation, other, okay, and whatever. Get up. So now... There we go. So that animation is 1.433. How many threes are on there? Five. One point four. One two three. Five. And let's go ahead and get up. Get on up. And. So if you had an actual um, animation for it to uh, recover from the death animation, then you would use it there. So there you go. So now I can do my thing. Hey, checkpoint. Yay. Oh, shit, I died. Enough. <laughs> Easy stuff, man. See, I've been wanting to get back into, and somebody else brought up the um, the pitfall challenge, and you know what? Um, I've been doing this for how many years? I would say roughly about one. Nobody taught me how to do this shit. I just got in here and started screwing around. There are better ways of doing this. They really are. Um, you know, setting up animation montages. I suck at animation montages. I mean, if you go in here to animation and set up animation montage, pick your skeleton, death, mont, go into it, and okay, um, I've done them before, and I just really suck at doing them. So whenever you suck at doing something, do it anyway. Then delete it and do it again. And then delete it and do it again. Do it about five or six times. Come back a week later, delete it, do it again. So, let's see here. See, I have nothing in here in this animation montage. And yep, that preview controller. Um, bring in death. So now when you hit play, plays your death animation. Bring it all the way to the end. And then let's add in another one here. Let's see. So you want it to be right there at the end and then get up. Make sure we want to add in another one.
Yeah, see, I, I totally, I, I totally suck at doing this. Yeah, yeah, I, I would have to get back in here and play around with it. But setting up a death animation and respawn animation montage, both. That way you, you've incorporated these together and you're setting your reference pose being that or you're setting your animation state or playing animation. You could set that as an animation montage. Um, that kind of stuff. So you can do like um, right click on death, create animation montage and there you go, death montage. And then right click on that, create animation montage, respawn, save all, save selected. Then at that point, instead of playing animation, play animation, play animation, play animation, you could actually do um, play animation montage and then target self animation montage is death montage and then set your animation pose and uh, let's see here yeah um, target is self but target is mesh So there's there's other there's more than one way to skin the cat. Let's grab a reference to our mesh and then if you just type in anim set animation. And what happened if you just set that animation to dead? So at that point, play your animation montage and then set that to set the animation so now you're stuck in that animation and then you do your delay and then set your actor location and then you're gonna do your so we should say delay We'll make it three seconds. Well, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring this down and I'm going to recreate all of this stuff here. And what I can do is I will drag this down. So now, as we're doing this, we'll actually go through it this way. We can always just relink it back up there. This is going to do nothing at all because now we're going to run it this way. So I want to grab these guys. So control C, control V. I'm just going to go ahead and link those in. And then needed to deactivate my character movement. I haven't tried it this way before, so I don't know if it'll work or not. Because I have not spent much time working with animation montages. And I need to spend more time with it. If you're not good at something, spend some time doing it. So, essentially, what we're doing here is we're checking are we dying? and if we are not dying then we can do all this stuff we we'll play our sound at the location deactivate our movement play our animation montage for death montage and then we need to set in our delay death montage is 1.9 seconds so we need to 
Actually, before I put it in there, I actually want to test it. Because playing an animation montage is different. So... Alright, it didn't play it. Alright, so... Hmm. All right, well, let's, um, yeah, I'll, I'll screw with that later. We know that our other stuff worked just fine without having to reinvent the wheel. The stuff we already did works. So we run around, we die, it plays our animation. Our sound. And it plays our respawn animation. Get to our checkpoint. We can't fall out the map, but we can die. And one last little thing here. And then I'm getting the hell out of here. Um, let's look at our... Polygon Western Meshies characters. Um... I don't have all the other assets in here. But just for giggles, um, we're going to pretend that, you know, this lovely lady here is actually our, our um, well, we're the sheriff. Let's actually, we'll come back as the cowboy. So when setting up your death, if you want your character to become a zombie once they die, then... And all of our lovely stuff here for our death sequence. Before we set our actor location, well, when we set our actor location, do I want it before or after? Let me have to do it after we set our location. We have a reference to our mesh, so let's actually set skeletal mesh. We'll throw that in line. So at that point, we are going to change our skeletal mesh to that of the cowboy. This could be your zombie skin or your your skeleton skin. You see, we're the sheriff. We're the good guy. We're the sheriff. Holy crap, we just died. And then we're going to come back as a zombie when we respawn. There you go. Now, it doesn't matter anything else that happens right now. If we die again, we're already that skeletal mesh, so it's just going to keep bringing us back as that skeletal mesh. Bum, bum, bum. Yes, you could also set it up to where I'm facing this way whenever I went to the checkpoint. Now, whenever I die. I'm not going to touch my screen or my mouse or anything. I'm still facing that direction. So now, if I come over here and I'm facing this direction, whenever I cross into the spawn point, but now I'm looking this way, I'm still in that same perspective. So you can actually force it to where I'm running this way whenever I cross the checkpoint. So if you want it to, no matter what, whenever I respawn, I want my character to be facing this way and my view to be facing this way. Um, you would have to, instead of um, getting the, um, the references here, on our death function, we would actually go into our 
um, gadgets and our checkpoint instead of getting this is setting our location for the spawn point however we could also grab a reference to our character our player and get actor rotation or transform and now whenever we're setting up our spawn point we can break this and get more complicated and set that as our existing reference so this is just setting, setting our, our position on the map and you can break it down into um, getting your actor's location and rotation or, or whenever you're set actor location inside of your your death functionality here when you set actor location your spawn point is just set up as this so you could have actually gone in here and say you just get a rotation get that and break vector you can get your XYZ and you, there's so many different things you can do to break down the actual um, way that you respond I'm just a little bit too tired to really get into it right now but um, so you can actually force the, the rotation to be this way um, I said I, I'd set it to where my checkpoint you see the checkpoint you see the the squares but then whenever we're playing we don't see them um, that's just because of the way I've got it set up um, we know by the little objects being there on the ground where our checkpoints are going to be so it makes a sound every time we hit a checkpoint and we can make it play a sound when we die um, we could also set it to where once I've already set that now whenever I die I respawn I'm a zombie whenever I come back watch what happens it's setting our checkpoint again and um, it's playing the sound file as if we haven't been here yet so then it's just a matter of breaking down and setting up variables saying um, and, you know it can you could set up something in there to where it's saying okay whenever you set that when you're you're crossing over to the um, the checkpoint here you can set up like has checkpoint one or has checkpoint 97 or whatever a variable system saying that you already have that so now whenever you do die and you respond it's going to in the checkpoint blueprint it's gonna ask have you already discovered this and then if it comes back with yes then it does nothing because you've already got that set for your checkpoint so it doesn't matter how many times you die until you reach the next checkpoint you're always going to respawn back at that last checkpoint you went through so it, that it doesn't play the, the sounds or the lights or the the widgets or whatever oh, fuck Fortnite <laughs> you, you knew that would get a negative response out of me um, yeah, I've already talked to them about that, and, um, yeah, um, I've already started working on something that's, I don't want to make a game that's just like another game, I'm going to make it my own variation, and so, with that new asset pack, as soon as it hits the shelves, then I'll have it in hand, and then I will start working on, on a project with it. Um, that survival game kit let's see something here um, survival game kit has a lot of promise and I'm going to look at that really quickly here 
but it's also got a lot of bugs. And while it's loading here, I'll fix my getting close to bedtime concoction. Orange Crush. I know, shocker. Um, but mixed with the Orange Crush. I know you can't see that. Alka Seltzer Cold Formula. Orange Zest. I believe it or not, it helps me to be able to breathe easier so I can sleep. And it, I don't know why, but I'm not like a doctor or a chemist or whatever, but it helps my sleep apnea and lets me sleep a little bit better. I don't wake up choking to death. It's nothing like, you know, being awoke in the middle of the night because you stop breathing. Pretty awesome. It's cool shit. Boys and girls, never take up smoking. If you're smoking now, stop. Do whatever it takes. Stop. Before you end up like my old ass. I've had sleep apnea for for every bit as long as I've you know, even before I started smoking, so it's not like it's a related thing, but damn sure doesn't make it any better. <coughs> nope, no oxygen machine yet, but yeah, I'm waiting for it. Once you've smoked for so many years, it gets more and more difficult to try and quit. It's an addictive chemical. So, if you guys are not familiar with Survival Game Kit, it's on the, uh, the marketplace. Yeah, it's like 50 bucks, whatever, but... Essentially, you've got um, a system of resources. Um, this is version 1.4.2. I don't think I've updated mine yet, but you can pick up items. You got to build blocking volume, damage zones. So when you walk in through there, it knocks your health pretty bad. Storage systems, crafting, and holding down shift and clicking, I can, uh, let's see, I'll have to go back through there. You should be able to um, stack water bottles. And you've got hold E to open. You got random spawn stuff. Like there's a stone you have to hold down to, to pick it up. There's another bottle of water. You open this one. Oh, gee, this one has cans of beans in it. And it has cardboard helmet. You got random spawns. You got a campfire you can cook food on. Furnace for crafting. Um, Set a respawn point. Crafting bench. We can craft items here. Um, you got weapon systems. There's a lot of really cool things in here. Grab one box of shells uh, for shotgun shells. 5.56 five, and 9mm. Pistol is. <sighs> yeah, they're calling it a, a 1911, but anybody with a little bit of common sense knows that uh, that's a Beretta M9 or 92. So you got aim system. You right click to go into to aim and first person view. On right click and you can well gee I, I know I picked up 9mm ammo so let's put the weapon away hit tab. Oh box of 9mm rounds. I will have to open the box of ammo. Now I get my pistol, and then I can reload. Let's grab the blueprints. And I'm going to grab these two bandages. I'm going to grab a hammer. There's a pick and an axe there. Um, iron bars. You can craft your armor. Uh, let's see here. 
large backpack, small backpack. Oh, I can get a silencer for my pistol. Get my M4 out. I can get a silencer for it. Get a red dot scope for it. So if you set up a crafting system here to where, um, let's see, a pistol, drag, put the silencer on, put silencer on the M4, put scope on the M4. There you go. Hold out. So you got your red dot scope. Oh no, I gotta reload. Yeah. Semi automatic, hit the B key. Full auto, hit the B key again. Three shot burst, hit it again. Back to semi auto. Um, let's see here. It's a wood chest. Um, furnace, metal bed, crafting bench, iron bars. Let's grab some logs. Let's grab our blueprints. Let's see, we got our blueprints in our hand. Hold down the F key and let's select foundation. And you can build a foundation. Now let's go back and let's build a door. Let's build a window. Let's build a regular wall. Oh, we want to be able to walk in here, so. Let's put a ramp by the front door and let's go ahead and put a front door on. And let's go ahead and. Oh, the stairs, they don't line up the way I want them to. So let's hit the R key to rotate. There we go. And then. Let's do. Um, those guys there you go so let's grab our hammer we get the Q and we can upgrade or we can demolish or we can repair so if you've got some stone come over here and upgrade turn it from wood to stone you can do that with the foundations the walls Stairs, just can't do it with doors and the window shutters. So that's that. And let's see F and there and there. Even though there are some little bugs here and there. Um, you notice my, my hunger and my thirst. Uh, yeah, there are ways of tweaking that. The water volume, so that whenever you set up a pond, you can actually drink. So you can drink from the water. There's a delay on that, so you can't just sit there and constantly slurp the water. There's a slight bug in it to where if three people are trying to drink at the same time, then, yeah, once someone starts to drink, it stops whoever else is drinking. Inventory, you can drop items, stack items, whatever. Go back over here and you can see what's what. Pick them all back up. One of the items I had was that guy. storage chest so let's put some stuff in the storage chest now one of the things that I've done was um, I've actually fixed the the stack sizes so I can't restack those and that's kind of stupid so I've, I've actually done some changes to them here and there yeah there, there's just some issues with it I can't put those in here anymore now I can't put that in there yeah, so, like I said, there are a bunch of little issues with it, but it's a really good start to get you along the way for building your own. Um, no, no melee attacks, but it's because they didn't, well, yes, there is. I mean, you could take the hammer and put that in there, and you could hit somebody with the hammer, 
hit him with the axe or the pickaxe. So let's grab weapon number four, which is the axe. So you can chop somebody with an axe. You can actually come over to the trees and chop wood. You can pick up branches from the brush. If you use a pickaxe on stone, you get less stone than if you were actually to use the pickaxe. Um, adding new stuff in, adding new recipes wasn't really that bad to do. So this is the unmodified version. Um, just go into survival game kit, blueprints, um, items, and you get item list. And it, it's a list. So I mean, all you have to do if you want to add something in new is you can see what you're you're looking through here. Like for example, the the pistol name PT1911, which is this is don't get me started on on that shit. Um, the weight, how much it costs in your inventory for weight, what type of equipment it is, equipment slot. Um, is it holdable? Yes. Holdable class for the handgun there. Attachment class, none. Um, what montage to equip and, and equip item and the pistol equip montage. The Is it droppable? Yes. Is it stackable? No. Max stack, all the other stuff like how many slots does it take in inventory? Or does it have, rather? Um, does it do anything to your hunger, thirst, health, stamina, fuel, the icon for it, the the world mesh, which is a static mesh, the equipped mesh, which would be your skeletal mesh, um, any modifications like uh, your mesh world offset, the sounds that it makes, now the one thing I did notice with this also is they did not put the correct sound files in. So what they did was they had a link to the WAV file and not to the sound queue. It needs a link to the sound queue and it also needs to have the right attenuation set up. So that's something that I had to correct in their stuff. But that's the list of where you put all the sounds that it would use. Uh, things like that. Same thing for hammer. Um, the equip and you know the equip uh, montages T if third person and first person if there's not but a third person only you can put it the same for both of them so you that's your your montage for that um, so that's your item list loot spawn um, I haven't messed with that one yet but you got um, the individual items you create the uh, the blueprint for it. Here's the pickaxe. Um, it's just a child of a master. A static mesh and world mesh just shows your listings for those. Um, resources save system. Their save system is in here, but it was not engaged. So there's a bunch of little small issues with this, but it's a good start because it is um, replicated. For anybody who wants to take a look at this, go to the BBG demo section of my Discord channel, and it is right here, the very last entry in here. This is a, a playable demo with my usual multiplayer and everything else. Um, Go ahead and find that real quick. Oh, shouldn't fall back in it. Uh, survival demo. It's my usual, you know, my multiplayer system. Oh, my cocktail is finished. It's percolating. Oh, that's so delicious. Ugh. That last little bit of kick, where it's nothing but straight medication.
the animations you can just set yourself. You can set your own animation montages and stuff. So, multiplayer, host, howdy, make, go right in and play. And in the demo version that I put out, it's just a um, little pond right here that you can walk into and you can drink from it. I didn't change the characters, I didn't change anything else. I just made a temporary map and threw in some foliage. You can chop down trees if you want. You can chop up the stones if you want, but... Ooh, look, an apple. But I went ahead and put all the crafting stuff right here. I put in a bunch of ammo, four of each of the guns, some random spawns, armor spawns. Each one of these bags here is 99 stone. Each one of these logs here are 99 logs. So there's plenty of logs, no excuses. Apples are stacked 99. Water bottles are stacked in 10. Four of each of the flashlight, blueprints, axes, everything else. So, and once it's picked up from the table, once you die, it will um, despawn after a while. And one thing I did notice about the weapons as, as well is they have health. So if they break completely, I'm not sure if you can repair them, but when they're damaged, you can bring them over to the crafting bench and repair them. I modified some of their, their blueprints for the recipes. I added in the repair hammer, pickaxe, crafting bench, and um, yeah, I added those three in because they were not in the recipe list. But this is fully replicated, fully multiplayer. Runs off of my simple Steam multiplayer template. And it is fully functional. You and your friends can jump in here and play together. Do all the construction. Uh, myself and Skippy and a couple other people got in here together. And built um, each built a, like our own fortress. And just kind of like took turns shooting at each other and that kind of stuff. But I recommend if you want your own Fortnite game get this it'll get you started all right I'm out here it's been over an hour and a half I try to keep these no more in about an hour and I'm over by 38 minutes so all right guys I hope some of that stuff helped you guys out and uh, like I said I'll, I'll try to get back to my normal routine of streaming every day or as much as possible but I'm still not 100 percent you know I had the, the tooth pulled from here went through the um, the transition and everything and just still feel like crap and today is it just rolled over it's just past midnight now so now today is October 1st and my birthday is in two more days Wednesday is my birthday <clears throat> be going out to eat and hopefully their freaking mouth would be suitable for going out to eat. So, all right, guys, I'll be back and forth on on Discord for a little bit longer. But before I started my go to bed sequence of my my nightly cocktail part one, and then after a few minutes, I take the next medi medication. And then after about thirty more minutes, I take the last one. By then, I got about, by 1 o'clock, I'll be done. It's midnight now. I'll be done by, by 1 a.m. So, all right, guys. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.